Greetings in peace. I would like to start this with Audu Billahi Minish Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahmani Rahim, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuhu. The presentation I would like to do today will be dedicated to Serene Salihu Mbaki, who was the fifth caliph of Muridism in Senegal, West Africa, and the last surviving son of Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba. I would like to dedicate this to Sheikh Sufi Ba. And I hope you all benefit from the teachings and life of Serene Salihu, Barkis Serene Salihu. Serene Salihu Mbaki was born on September 22, 1915, and he passed away on December 28, 2007, between the ages of 91 and 92. He was the fifth caliph of Muridism and last surviving son of Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba. Those that do not know, Muridism is a Sufi order that comes from Senegal, West Africa. And Serene Salihu was like a light. He was like a light of the world because when he left this world in 2007, things started getting more worse after that in the condition of the world as we saw with the crash, the economic crash of 2008 and then things just started getting more intense in terms of the global conflicts, climate, so on and so forth. And he was one of those pillars of light that was holding a lot of the world together and he was loved and cherished by all didn't matter what tarika or sufi order or religion or race that they were everyone in the world came to seek his blessings and prayers diplomats and beings from all delegations from the islamic world no matter what sect they were what religion they were he was loved and cherished by all Serene Salyu Ambaki was the Katub of his time. And for those that do not know, a Katub is a pole in the Waliullah, the Awliya, who are the friends of Allah. And he was an individual and being who was full of wisdom and love for all of the beings in Senegal and all over the world, regardless of race or religion. Serene Salyu is a Wali, a friend ally of God. But he's actually an Aliya, and even in the Friends of God, there's a hierarchy, and he was at the top of that food chain. And he was the Katub, the spiritual pole and leader of his time. And the aspects of the hierarchy of the Aliya law is the Abdal, the substitutes, the Autad, the pillars, the Nukaba, the leaders, and the Nujaba, the nobles. And they all have like different jobs within their function. But the Ketub is the ultimate helper of humanity and for the human beings, the sons of Adam. And Serene Salihu Mbaki had a direct proximity to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because between the Ketub and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, there is only Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Ketub obtains his knowledge directly through Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the aspect of him, him being a part of his father's bloodline and being descendants of the Prophet Muhammad. And Serene Salihu Ambaki, he had, did a lot of great work for the Senegalese people. And Serene Salihu did the aspects of just not only the agriculture, but building the daras and schools and educating the children of Senegal when no one else could to take care of them. If the, if the government could not take care of them, Serene Salihu took care of those children and those daras and education facilities to take care of fallen humanity. Now with Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba, may peace be with him, he had four sons before leaving for his first exile, who was Serene Mudu Mustafa, Serene Muhammad Lamin Bara, Serene Falu and Serene Muhammad Bashir. So please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing any of the names. And the the sons of Serene Tuba, Sheikh Amadou Bamba, uh, also obtained their wilaya because of their hard work and their devotion and prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Qadim Rasul, Serene Tuba, Sheikh Amadou Bamba, returned from his first exile, after he was facing his trials and tribulations, he he was not like an average human being anymore because he was sub subjected to the trials of the prophets. 
when at that time when Serene Tuba was uh, in a, basically in a spiritual retreat, then he had the visitation from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who told him that if he wished to be Qadim Rasul, then he had to go through the trials and tribulations. So when he came back from those various assassination attempts and all of the stuff that he was put through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded Serene Tuba by giving him the station of Qadim Rasul after his exile in Gabon and Allah fulfilled all of his wishes. And that is that is the beauty that we see in this. And with Serene Tuba, Qadim Rasul, he was so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even a lot of his poetry is dedicated to the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he spent his entire life serving this cause. And he asked Allah that please give me noble, righteous descendants that would continue the work that he had initiated with the founding of Muridism. And with all the, his heirs and descendants, he had asked Allah to give him good offsprings. And the reality that we're dealing with today is that Sheikh Amadou Bamba and his descendants, their job on earth is to just to work for Allah. Because that's what separates them and sets them apart from your average human being who's chasing after money, degrees, titles, chasing after a false life and an illusion which has no result in the end. Because when we die, the only thing that we take with us is what good did you do for yourself and others? Not about your degree, titles, job, where you live, bank account, etc. Now, as I've stated before, Serene Salyu, who did great work in terms of his daras and his tarbiyat for, for the students and um, the, the kids of Senegal. And the parents of those kids did not have to give him anything. And he even told the population of Senegal that if you have children and you cannot take care of them, you give them to me and I will take care of them. And Serene Salyu, who gave them food, clothing, shelter, education, and taught them how to be good, strong human beings. And his students, or practically his children at that time, they learned Islam, Islamic knowledge, fiqh, tasawwuf, and Sufism, tawhid, uh, the aspect of the Arabic language, studying and becoming scholars of the Hadiths, the Quran. And he also made them work in agriculture and learned how to be self-sufficient. So he was taking care of them, not only by educating them, but also preparing them from childhood to adulthood where they had a job, they were educated, and they would be able to sustain themselves with education, a career, adulthood, etc. And he had solidarity in his community. And depending on the aptitude or the aptitude of the student that he was dealing with on their skills, it depends on if they were good, if they possessed that quality to be a scholar then they would continue in their education. And if some of them did not possess that quality of continuing higher education, then he would have them be work, work, working in agriculture. It's like the American education system we see today. It's like a one size fits all. It's, it's not for everyone. Colleges and universities are not for everyone. Some people are meant to just work while some people are meant to be scholars and studying and doing other things in their life. So everyone has something good about them, which helps them survive in their life. So Serene Salyu, who was an, a, implementing this method even then in, in his time, where he realized the ones that were going to be scholars of these different dis disciplines, he would continue keeping them in that field according to their ability. And the ones that did not they would be working, but still, either or, whether they were working or studying, they were still contributing members of society. That's the beautiful way on, on how he handled it. Now, if you look at Tasawwuf and Tarbiyat, and you have the Tarbiyat or Tarbiya, or how they say it in English, is the ethics and the spiritual education that you get in terms of how to respect and adab your character, for your parents, for your teachers, neighbors, friends, and society in general. And even in Adara, it, there's not only a potential to be an alim, but it increases your knowledge and your aptitude and even a wali if you really love 
Allah and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, you have the ability to become a wali, a friend of Allah. And if you are in the aspect of becoming a scholar, then you can learn those things as well. And even after the Dara, it's like I said, Serene Salyu who was preparing a lot of his students for life ahead. And one of the quotes of Serene Salyu to his students is that the aspect of nur and light, that if you maintain it, it will illuminate your face and your heart and people will be attracted to it. And if you don't, do not maintain it and you forget it and you don't care for it, you will become like ordinary people. So he continued to produce scholars, waliullah, as much as he could. Now in the, uh, the Kelcom section of Senegal, please excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, there are thousands of scholars in Tuba, in Senegal, and even abroad. And when he passed away, when he left this world, he had over 30 daras, and each dara had over 300, 330, possibly 400 students. And also, he had, if you total all of that up, it was probably over 12,000 students. And he cared for them, loved for them, educated them, produced good members of society. Even the Senegalese government were not doing any of that. And if you see how he has built the infrastructure, not only in Tuba and even in Calcom, you could see how in terms of agriculture, education, how he has helped hum humanity. And most people would realize that how can one man do any of this? And that's the beauty of Serene Salihu. When Serene Tuba, Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba, asked, Allah, please give me a good, good offsprings. Allah did indeed give him Serene Salihu. And the beauty of Serene Salihu is that if you learn from these teachers, if you learn from these teachers and take heed to what they're telling you, they, they can teach you many of the realities that we're not seeing. The aspect of the Zahir and the Batin, having love for the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, having love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Islam, we are told that Allah was a hidden treasure who wished to be known. It says that in the Quran, hence why Allah created creation to be known. So if you spend your life loving Allah and loving His Prophet, then you will always be loved, protected, and provided for. And Serene Salih, who is teaching us the same thing here, that if you have the ability to become a wali, that if you love Allah and His Prophet dearly, and if you handle this world in a way where yes it's, it's okay you have to work and sustain yourself and to be able to survive in this world with your expenses and all that in between but don't lose yourself into this world so much that you forget Allah and the purpose that you were manifested here for and if we look at the aspects of how many ambassadors and uh, delegations all over the world came to Serene Salihu that it shows you that if you do possess that ability then Allah will make sure that you will become a guide to the people and all people loved and respected him and we must keep in heed what he is teaching us about hard work being close to God and doing the right thing with the time that you have given. I mean, and, and look at in Senegal in his lifetime, he trained the future foundation of that country of thousands upon thousands of students who basically are leading the world in many ways. So thank you so much to keep this video short and to the point. I hope you were able to benefit from Serene Salihu and what he's teaching us about hard work, being close to the Prophet, and how we must be on this path of Sufism and being in contact with Allah and doing the right thing in our life in this time with the abilities that we have. So again, I hope you benefited and I dedicate this to Sheikh Sufi Ba. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.